Danny Green, 15 years, three NBA championships. What's interesting, he got one with the Spurs, the Raptors, and the Lakers. Host to Inside the game, uh, game Room with Danny Green. Smart guy, always love him on the show. You know, we talked about that, is that sometimes when you get a star and you're not in a glamorous market, like in Milwaukee, and uh, you may yeah. win, but you're like, we got to make this move because players won't choose us. We got to go trade for them. And I thought the Dame Giannis thing would be better. Uh, the analytics tell you it's not great. Are you surprised that Dame and Giannis, Danny, has not been a perfect fit? No, uh, I think this year, I think a lot of people expected better, but it's just the first year. Mind you, there's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of injuries, guys coming and going. Um, during the trade deadline, they picked up different people. I don't think that they don't fit. I just don't think that the defensive side is producing the way they expected. Yeah. And that's the, due to the lack of Drew and the pieces they've gotten around them. You know, letting Drew go changes your defense. Uh, letting certain people go changes your defense. So, uh, you know, Jay Crowder's a guy that had injuries. They don't have a bunch of three and D guys. And now Malik Beasley's been shooting the hell out of the ball. Defensively, he has to carry the load in that starting group of guarding the perimeter. Because obviously they're a little bit smaller. You know, Dame is not... So not the greatest defender, but he's not terrible, but he's just smaller. They have a smaller, you know, front court or back court with him. And then Pat Bev, he's a defender too, but he's smaller. Uh, so I think that's where their, their weaknesses are. It's not the offense. Obviously, the Dame can score, Giannis can score, Brooke just shoots it well. They have good shooters around them. But defensively is where they lack a lot of the discipline. And then with the coaching change, you know, that, yeah. that it makes things a little bit harder. You know, midseason, you got it 30 and 13. You got a coaching change, probably change up the whole offense, trying to figure each other out. I think it just needs more time. So. Um, I'm not that shocked, but I also think you have to you have to give them a little bit of great, more grace period because of the things that have happened this year with them. So I was saying to start the show that there was a time uh, my f favorite first player was Dr. J, and we all loved Michael, and it was the spectacular. Mm -hmm. But analytics now are not about dunks in the spectacular; they're about different things. The league's getting more European, and the two. And by the way, when you play below the rim you age more gracefully. You start high flying, you crash to yeah. the floor. John Wall, Dwight Howard, Blake Griffin, Russell Westbrook. Steph's 36, looks like he could play forever. Luka and Jokic to me. Those guys look like they could shoot those jumpers until they were 44 years old. So I look at Luka, yeah. and I look at the European players, and I look at Jokic, and it's not as aesthetically pleasing. It's not the NBA I grew up with. I love it. Mm -hmm. But I, I look at those teams. Do you see what's happening to the league where these guys that kind of play more deliberately below the rim, mm -hmm. analytic superstars, not that optically, they're not jumping high flying guys. Do you see the change the NBA is moving to more European and that Luka and Jokic may be our magic and bird the next 10 years? Yeah, I see it. But I also think it's, it's never going to go, like, completely away from the American type of basketball style of play, I guess you would say, uh, quote-unquote, of uh, the athleticism. You, know, you still have guys like Anthony Edwards. You still have guys like John Morant. Um, those guys are still – just maybe they can adapt and adjust, but some of them said their careers may not last as long, like a Dirk, because they shoot the one-legged fade, which you don't have to be athletic to do. But they're great players, and I see them adapt and adjust and – uh, but, yes, I, I have seen that the league has changed some and going in that direction. Those guys are crafty. They're pros at 15, 16 years old, so they have really good fundamentals. They have really good touch. They have high IQ. They're some smart, smart, probably a little smarter than some of the American players, for sure, uh, because they've been doing it so long. And they have to be smarter or crafty because they're not as athletic. Yeah. Uh, but I still see uh, a lot of that American-style play happening because we have so many dynamic superstars, so many guys that can do not only be athletic, but can score too um, under the rim and do this at Anthony Edwards and John Morant. Those guys, I can still see them. Shea, uh, uh, SGA, I see those guys still be able to score and adapt and adjust when their athleticism isn't as, as high as it was when they're younger. Um, you know, Blake, people say Blake Griffin, but he developed a jumper in mid range. He shot some threes and in Detroit, he played a different style of game. So I can see guys adapt and adjust as they get older. Uh, but, you know, People love, that's the reason why they sell a lot of tickets. People love to watch those type of things. People want to see those type of things. Yeah. They want to see the athleticism. They want to see the dunks. They want to see the fast breaks. It's why they change, you know, the, the take foul rule, or the, you know, stop in the break rule, because they want to see more fast breaks and more points yeah. and more threes. Um, so, yeah, I can't see us completely uh, getting away from it.
you know, I've said, I don't think the Lakers could beat Denver, but I could argue they may match up better with them than anybody not named the Celtics. They're long. Mm. Uh, LeBron, AD mm -hmm. at least makes Jokic work. He's such a dominating defensive player, and he's been healthy now for a year and a half. LeBron in any big series can take over a game and create shots. And then they have enough guys, mm -hmm. Austin Reeves, D'Lo, can hit a jumper. It, it, I don't know if they can beat Denver. I look at Denver, and they don't have much of a bench. Most good teams in this league don't. They pay their big guys up front. Yeah. Do you think anybody yeah. in the West, like I think, I think OKC is just too young. I watched Minnesota last yeah. night, and I'm like, oh, they kind of match up with them. Is there a team that you think forces Denver six or seven games or potentially could beat them? I said one-on-one, -on -one, I agree with you. I think Anthony Davis is the best one-on-one -on -one matchup for Jokic. And even then, Jokic kind of yeah. plays pretty well against the Lakers. There's no one-on-one -on -one matchup for him in the league that you can, you know, that, that's going to stop him. I think the best matchup, you said Minnesota last night, but they still are missing Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah. I think with those two bigs, it gives Jokic the best look. And I think they're the only team in the West that gives them the best matchup. Yeah. Now, Lakers, they have good pieces. I don't think they have that second big that they need to because AD is better playing away from the ball, off the ball, weak side, having to guard Jokic and, and have, like, guarding Aaron Gordon, a cutter a lot, but block shots on the weak side. But he doesn't have that. Like, they have Jackson Hayes, but I don't know if that's enough. Yeah. You know, the best times when we were able to face them or play the one with the Lakers is that we had JaVale McGee, Dwight Howard. We had multiple bigs that we could throw at him and, you know, play the two big game to where two defensive bigs can make it hard for him. The only team that I see that, that kind of emulates that is – the Minnesota Timberwolves, when they have Carlton Towns healthy, they need to get him back sooner than later if they want to make a, a good run in the playoffs. I think if Giannis gets bounced early in the playoffs, he'll grumble. I think Jalen Brunson's better than I ever thought he would be. I think Golden State would make a run and move off all their young bigs. They'd give up draft picks, Kaminga. They'd give up anything. They're going to keep probably Draymond, Steph, and Pods if they can, but they'll move off a lot. If let's say you were Giannis and here come the Knicks, mm -hmm. here come the Warriors, would you stay in the East, which is weaker? Because I do think if Milwaukee gets bounced, I mean, Giannis is moving through some coaches here. They, they don't have a lot of draft picks. Yeah. Boston looks like they're yeah. much better equipped for the future. So is OKC in Denver. If you were a Giannis and you were unhappy, is there a place? Because Brunson's better than I thought he would ever be. I'm not so sure. For that sure. For I sure. think New York and Giannis make sense. No? I think it makes more sense than Golden State. Uh, they're a little bit younger. They have, uh, you said it's in the East. It's more, it's wide open. Yeah. The West is tough, man. If, if I'm if I'm one of those guys, I would not try to say, I mean, some some guys like the challenge. I mean, Giannis not getting any younger. He has the issues with the calf, the knee, and his ailments are coming along. So it's. When he's younger, it may be different. Like, I, I want all the smoke. I want to get to the West and play in the West Coast teams and try to beat those guys. But he's already won with Milwaukee. He's proven that he's a champion and he's done it with his group and his city. So he's done what he's supposed to do when he was in the city of Milwaukee. He is able to now figure out what he wants to do and what's best for him without the city holding it against him. And I do think the best place for him in the East would probably be the New York Knicks, honestly. Uh, but then you'd have to let go of some guys. They can keep Jalen, OG, and him. You'd have to get rid of Julius Randle, uh, uh, Mitch Robinson, Hartstein. Like, there's a lot of pieces uh, that you'd have to probably move in that that deal that you don't want to get rid of because they have a lot of great pieces there in New York. Um, but, yeah, that would probably be the best fit for him in the East. Finally, Wemby. Again, better than I thought. Another European played against older players. So he walks into this league, gets really good, like Luka and Jokic, you know, Luca was by his 20th game in this league. You're like, oh, we got an elite score. Is Wemby better than you thought he would be at this age and at this time? I think, yes, all the people you just mentioned are, are a lot better. I, I thought I knew Jalen Brunson was good. I didn't think he'd be great. And I thought, you know, the, you know, the New York bright lights would make it different. But, but Wemby, I think he has proven a lot of people wrong because nobody expected this. A lot of people thought Bo Bo, a lot of people thought he was too tall and not agile enough to guard the pick and roll. But he's able to do it all. You know, he's able to guard. He's able to protect the rim. He's able to shoot threes, play from the high post. Um, and to do it in such a short stint, man, is impressive. So it's his rookie year still, and the best is yet to come. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's exceeded my expectations. He's way better than I expected him to be. And I can't wait to see, you know, what his ceiling is or what he gets to in the next couple of years. It's probably going to be the face of the league yeah. in the next three years or so. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including... 
exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, and more wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.